just wanted to show, we have a link here to all of our COVID-19 funding opportunities are posted on that OER COVID-19 website I was talking about. And as you kind of mentioned, Michelle, there are some specific requirements and tracking pieces in place for those COVID-19 mm -hmm. um, emergency appropriations. And so all that information can be found in those funding opportunity announcements. So like you mentioned, the separate document numbers and PMS, which require a little bit of different reporting because they have to do a separate FFR for those. Um, and another thing to note for these FOAs is that since this is a public health emergency, the FOAs are not always going to be published as early as they normally would be. So the turnaround times and deadlines might be a little bit different than what you're used to when you're looking at an NIH FOA. So it's important to really look at the specific FOA to note those requirements. Yeah, I think that's really important because one of the things that we've identified within the enterprise is that, you know, how often do you have a public health emergency, right, where you need to get funding out immediately to meet the need immediately. Um, and so for us, there are time, there have been times where we've had to get uh, FOAs out in an expeditious manner. But I want to make sure that even when you see a FOA that may be out and you see a notice of correction, please pay attention to the notices of correction as well. Um, and again, we do have um, a website within OER, Office of Extramural Research, um, where we identify all of the notices, all of the notices of corrections and that kind of thing, and making sure that you have um, the up-to-date information because we are moving rapidly and errors have occurred and we've corrected them and we wanna make sure that you have the latest and greatest um, in order to apply successfully um, for these emergency funding so that we can um, fight COVID-19 with the help of our recipients and experts in the field. 